You're watching The Daily on Shaw TV Channel 4. I'm Kate Bergen. We are outside the Townsite Medical Clinic near downtown Nanaimo because Dr. Lorne Goodall, who works from here, participates and helps out the Village Medical Project for Sierra Leone. Wes Strickland from Delicados is fundamental in making this project possible. What is the project? Well, that's what we're going to talk about on this edition of The Daily. Also in the lineup, our island chef Michael Williams is creating barley mushroom risotto. Kelly Robinson checks in with the Nanaimo Kennel Club. Their year show is coming up pretty quick. Marjorie Greaves in Campbell River introduces us to an author who introduces us to York Island. There's a bartender in Victoria who has been nominated as one of the best international bartenders by the Tales of Cocktail Festival. We'll raise a glass with him and Suchetta Singh on this edition of The Daily. But we're starting things off right here in Nanaimo. Empathy Nanaimo District Secondary School uh, is a project that supports an anti-bullying program. It's called TNT and it's giving teens a safe place to go and share and uh, put a stop to bullying. You are watching The Daily on Shaw TV Channel 4. I'm Kate Bergen and today we're looking into what is the Village Medical Project for Sierra Leone. Now one of the um, founders, starters, initiators of this project is Wes Strickland. You might know him from Delicados. First of all, you went in 2008? to Two Sierra 2008. For the first time to Sierra Leone? Yes. Why? Uh, the first trip was my friend, uh, Professor A. Abakima, that I went to university with uh, back in the States uh, over 30 years ago, uh, had called me for help. And that was when he had taken over as the, the war had just ended uh, a, a few years. And he was the vice chancellor for the University of Sierra Leone and needed help recomputerizing the administration end. So we did fundraisers here at Wellington Secondary School, things of that nature, raised money to do that, uh, all brand new computers and scanners, everything you can imagine. And I flew over with this airdrop uh, for the university. Yes. I was over there for about a month. And, and A and I sat back and talked about the needs of the country because it's less than 100 doctors for 6.3 million people. Uh, so you can imagine how many we have here just in Nanaimo for 75,000 or so. Right. Uh, uh, and the needs were so extreme because at that time, uh, the base rate for under five mortality uh, was 28.5%. Uh, infant mortality was the highest in the world. Uh, pregnant women mor uh, morbidity and mortality was the highest. Average life expectancy was somewhere around 40. Uh, so it was just terrible. I said, maybe we can do something more sustainable that can be more help, although the education end of it is extremely important. But you can't go to school unless you're healthy. Right. And, and some of these folks in the smaller villages, I was reading this brochure, have never seen a doctor in their lives. Uh, we, we complain about our medical system here, but we, we're actually pretty fortunate. Oh, I can't imagine. Uh, yeah. The people are actually in pain. You brought in some video. A lot of it is, is hard to watch. There's right. one part that really shows a groin rash on a young boy. We're not gonna show that part. I don't think I'm allowed to on TV, but there's a, a young child. He was 4.8 kilograms. He was four and a half kilograms, 18 months old, uh, severe malnourished, not because of the parents not feeding the kid, the kid had malabsorption syndrome. Yeah. It could not get nutrients from its food. It had falciparum malaria, the, the killing kind, uh, severely anemic, uh, malnutrition, um, uh, uh, dehydrated, high fever, things of this nature, all the parasitic worms that you can imagine that you would get in the jungle. And we were basically trying to get this child comfortable to die. Uh, our chief medical officer, who also is a, uh, in um, pediatric medicine, uh, trauma, uh, put together a food regimen, a diet that might work. When we came back the next year, one of the military physicians, because we use uh, two or three military doctors in Sierra Leone to work with us as well, as well as bringing in some of the medical school students to work with us. So we're bringing everything together. It's just not Westerners coming in. Um, one of the doctors who was there the previous year is sitting there going, look, and the child had just come in and uh, uh, our physician assistant, Miriam, I call for her, she's in pharmacy, she runs out, 
she just says it's a miracle. We just could not believe this child was alive and uh, was getting healthy, putting weight on, and looked great. It was pretty, pretty moving. There was, we we're going to move things along, but there was one other image in the video that you brought back, um, a, a youth right. that was potentially going to lo lose his leg exactly. just because. He fell down playing soccer, uh, had a bruise, and it became infected. So it was an infected hematoma. Uh, he was just a couple of days away from it going septic and losing his leg, or if not his life. Luckily, we had uh, received donations from one of the pharmaceutical companies for injectable antibiotics that we brought with us on this trip. We normally fly in about 1,500 pounds of drugs and medical supplies for each trip. And we have our own depot over there that we keep rotating our supplies. And uh, we do a full census every year. So we know every hut has an ID number. Uh, we know everyone that lives there, all their specifics, their weight, their height, their names, their age, so that when we look at what we're going to do, uh, we know what kind of drugs, medical supplies we need, and how much. And then we'll always make sure we have about 15% more because of the walk-ins that will happen. And when I mean a walk-in, I mean a mother with a baby on her back walking 20, 30 kilometers through the jungle because she heard that we were there and is just hoping that we are there when she gets there. And this could be there again, a malnourished child because of a, a malabsorption uh, syndrome. It could be cerebral malaria. Uh, these things hit, uh, it's, it's, it's a parasitic soup bowl over there. Wow. I mean, everything you can imagine, elephantitis, schisto, worm infections, and anemia. And uh, you're going back again? Yes. Every year you go? We, and we're looking at doing two trips per year coming up. Okay. And we keep expanding, we keep adding additional villages to the project so that we have our initial core sampling that we did. I hate using those adjectives, but that's what yeah. we're doing. Uh, we're sharing all of this data with the chief medical officer for the uh, Sierra Leone, the Minister of Health, the WHO, and the chief medical officer for the United Nations. And two years ago, we actually had the chief medical officer for the United Nations working with us for a couple of days. And there again, she was completely blown away when she saw our medications. Uh, it was more drugs and medical supplies than they have in the hospitals. Incredible. A real reality check for the different way that people in the same world live. And I can't say enough about what I've learned about Wes and his partners and what they're doing in Sierra Leone. You can get more information through their website. And uh, they have lots of fundraisers on an annual basis. There are more coming up this year. You can keep checking in for some dates and contact Wes directly if you want to help. We're going to continue with this edition of The Daily Now. Kelly Robinson is checking in with the Nanaimo Kennel Club, gearing up for their annual show. Before we do that, it's Marjorie Greaves in Campbell River talking to an author who wrote the first book on York Island. Where's York Island? I don't know, but we're going to find out. You're watching The Daily on Shaw TV Channel 4. I'm Kate Bergen. Today we are in one of the treatment rooms here at the Townsite Medical Clinic, the office of Dr. Lorne Goodall. Now he's worked with Wes for quite some time. Why do you choose to help Wes? Because without your support and without doctor's involvement, um, these people in Sierra Leone that need help wouldn't be getting it. So you're a key part in this process. Why? I believe in Wes. I think he does good work. Um, he's told me about his project and I believe in his project. I think it's a good opportunity for uh, Canadians and good people like Wes to do something in the world that'll make a difference. And I'm really proud to be a part of that. One of the things that's striking me is we're looking through the box of supplies. This is Irene and Wes. And some of the things in here are so simple. What, what are some of the items that we have in here? Dr. Goodall? Um, basic treatments for things like blood pressure, infections, um, there's a birthing kit, there's uh, some equipment to fix fractures, uh, plaster and some fiberglass. Um, and this is heart blood pressure medicine? It is, yes. We, we'd buy this here for not much at all, but to people who make a dollar a month. It, it can be very helpful. That in itself may be a month's income for somebody. Wow. Is it a complicated process? Is this, is this hard work for you? No, no, it's just, it's something that we, uh, and Irene is a big part of it. We do a lot of um, just collecting of this um, equipment over time, and then we can give it to, to Wes and hopefully make a difference. And I think you are making a difference. We saw some video earlier, and some of it was hard to watch. Uh, we didn't show it all to you. 
Um, I think just the experience here of hosting the daily, this edition, has changed my awareness and we're hoping that it does the same for you. We're gonna throw things over now to our island chef, Michael Williams. He always makes it look so good. That's it for this edition of The Daily. Thank you very much for watching and thank you to Wes Strickland and Dr. Lorne Goodall. They are crucial to making the Village Medical Project for Sierra Leone possible. Fantastic work that is happening over there because of these people based right here in Nanaimo. There's a website, www.vmpsl.org, or you can contact Wes through Delicatos to make financial donations or to find out about upcoming fundraisers. There's two, three, or four that happen every year. Thank you for watching The Daily. We'll see you next time.